So we're out here today with the trusty old Smith & Wesson 638. We got Sheepdog over there marking his territory. Anyway, it must be warming up because I went out in the garage where it'd been nice and cold and those freezing temperatures were keeping the ribs nice and fresh. But it uh, must be warming up because those, those ribs have turned green. That just ain't right, but they're gonna work. And uh, we got ourselves a Scudgy Redneck Ballistics dihydrogen monoxide to test out right here now this i i gotta say i was a little disappointed with chris from the 740 uh, not because it's testing his testing was amazing but it wasn't redneck enough he had nice clean water jugs and i, I didn't see anything scudgy like this i don't think milk's supposed to be green we got some 148 grain pmc 38 special wad cutters right here we've got some i think these are 158 if I remember, yeah, 158 lead, just standard round nose bullets to test. And as always, we got ourselves our yodeling pickle. We also got ourselves a few cans of these black beans right here. I, I love black beans. Uh, these ones, if organic stands for disgusting, uh, these ones are living up to their names. So I have found a good use for it. And I don't have my tripod, so... Uh, it's going to be a little bit weird and probably some continuity problems, kind of like always, standard oddball stuff. And we're pretty much just going to have a gay old time here. That, that ain't right. You're going to have to work the, oh, oh, oh I want to, oh, that's not right. We're going to see if we can get a wad cutter to hit this, and I just want to see what happens. I'm just going to do it two layers of denim through the bone and then two layers of denim, and then into one of these jugs. Let's see what we can do. So I have done this test with the spear gold dots, which seem to be a standard in the 38 Special. And then I got a sweet, sweet 148 grain wad cutter. I am pumped to see how these things handle. Yeah, I missed the ribs. Missed them completely. And total failure. Once again, story of my life. Dang it. I don't know if this will catch you in slow-mo or not. But the dust from the mold on the ribs was just billowing out of this like a chimney. I don't even want to touch them. All right. I think we got a good hit. It looks like... We grazed a chunk of bone. We're gonna have to try this dang thing again. Son of a diddly. Hit this right here, shot out the side. Who knows where that piece of garbage is gone. Ah. Oh, this is just bull crap. <laughs> Look at this. It went in right here, came out right here. That is quite interesting. Oh, whoa, smell. That's nice. Uh, let's just get her, just get into it. All right. So upon hitting bone, it just does all sorts of crazy stuff. It does its own thing. So it looks like it just kind of grazed that bone. You know what? Let's try it one more time. Why not? You know, that's gonna hurt and that's gonna do some damage. Got a nice hit on that bone and it shattered it into millions of little pieces. You got a little bit of lead fragments here. Uh, it's just, I've already done it once. Might as well touch it again. The things I do for, for you guys. So there you have it. Little hollow base, 148 grain wad cutter. Hits the bone, but we just don't get a lot of penetration. Now the power, it did. It did push stuff into the milk jug and deform it. So some of that might have just been the height different, but still wasn't enough to continue through and to, to push into that milk jug. So I would say, oh, well, it broke it. It broke the milk jug. Uh, we might, well, I better hurry and shoot it before we lose it.
Well, it looks like we got penetration of some kind. We got our little river floating down, cleaning up the old rib bones up. Okay. Looks like we had a direct hit on these things. It's pretty nasty. But we did get a good direct hit. Anybody want a pair of pants? Look at that. A couple things. Found a chunk of one of the wad cutters right here. Back, back under here. That is our 158 grain. So it went through, went through it there. Really didn't do any expanding as you can see. You find something good? Some nice aged beef rib bones. But that hit, I thought really good. Hit right where I was aiming. Cut a nice little cookie cutter hole in that. All right, look at that. You can hear that in there. But cool, check that out. It poked a hole, but didn't quite go into the Levi's. But look at that, cracked that right there. Uh, this is the one we just shot into the the jug of dihydrogen monoxide. I got beans all over my coat and myself. So on the beans, we hit that can right there, and you can see that little nice little hole that wad cutters like to do. But we do get some nice subception out of that can. Uh, nothing like shooting with a rifle, but then again, you wouldn't expect that, I don't think. Oh, look at that. So you went through one, two, three, four, five layers of denim after going through that can. And it held together pretty good. Now, this is kind of what I expected right here. It's a round nose, so it's gonna cut through the can and just poke a hole right through. Kind of, but it's still imparting energy. It's kind of ballooning out, at least the top of the can right there. Went through six, seven layers of denim. And it is coming out just beautiful. So right here, this was our 158 grain that we had shot. This is the one that hit the ribs. It, it just took a big old chunk out of it. And I'm curious to see what this thing weighs. So that weighs 151.3. So it really didn't lose that much weight. It only lost about seven grains. And now right here with all these little bits, that is our wad cutter. This is, this is the one that did not penetrate into the milk jug. Out of 148, we have 118.6. This was the first one that we got a hit on the ribs, but it, it hit the edge of the rib, just shaved off the edge of the bullet, and then buried itself under that corner of that wooden crate. And that one's actually coming in at 131.9. This is the one that was shot into the milk jug with the Levi's behind it. And that one we're looking at 147.9. So that's, that retained all of its weight. This right here, this is the one that we shot at the bean can and captured in the Levi's. That's 147.3. Right here, that's the 158 grain that we shot at the bean can. So that one comes in at 158. All right, that is perfect right there. So after recovering these bullets, watching their impacts, watching how they reacted to the different targets. I really, I really don't feel that comfortable. The, the wad cutter really is not gonna be the best self-defense round that you're gonna find. I, I would really use it as one of the last resorts. Even it's just standard round nose lead bullet, I feel more comfortable with. You've got another 10 grains in this thing, but it's solid and it holds together a little bit better even after it hits bone. And although it still deforms and it does deflect, 
it just didn't seem to be quite as affected as this where, and I don't know if that's just because it's hollow and it deforms so fast, so easy, but I personally would not make this a top choice in any case. I am sure that many a cop's life was saved and many a citizen who is carrying these and were able to use it effectively. But there are so many other bullets that would be better and would would do better. Is, is it gonna hurt when someone gets hit with this? If it doesn't kill them, oh yeah, it's gonna hurt tremendously. Uh, there's no doubt about it. It's gonna lose energy quicker. It's gonna deform, it's not gonna perform how you want. You, you may have a really good shot and, and it could be very easily deflected after hitting a rib bone. I do this stuff for fun and have a good time, but I'm not shooting this old moldy rib bone just for, to goof around, but I wanna see what happens to these bullets after they hit bone and how they react. And I think that's a whole lot better than shooting a bullet into ballistic gel with five layers of denim or whatever it is. And I, I don't think that that's not valid, but you can shoot these wad cutters into those tests and they'll do actually very well oftentimes just because of the nature and the consistency of the gelatin. And they'll come out and, and if you're just going off a ballistics gel test, you might be thinking that these wad cutters are the cat's meow. But that one hit that bone dead center and that bone stopped it just about. It didn't make it through the other side of the Levi's. You know, this, one, this one nicked the bone, deformed the bullet so much that, that the bullet went off course dramatically. And so that's what happened here with these fragments. These fragments, they ended up hitting the edge of the bone. It fragmented very odd. It did some damage, but I mean, we had one of these pieces penetrated half an inch into the jug of dihydrogen monoxide and exited the other side. And who knows where it went to. <laughs> Look at this. It went in right here, came out right here. They're less predictable. If it's all you got, it's all you got. So you're gonna use it. Good thing I'm wearing safety, McGlar says. All right, you hit two times in the same spot, you can penetrate it. When I was aiming here, I hit here. Aimed here, hit here. Aimed here and hit here. Aimed here and hit here. Say user error. Now let's try those round nose. Here we got one right there, nice and warm. Oh, I guess I had the one errant one. I guess actually it's hitting where I was aiming. That's crazy. Not all of them penetrated, but most of these did. Lighter's not always worse, but then again, lighter's not always better.